leaks. I'd take, say, WikiLeaks. I mean, WikiLeaks is a democratizing force. It's giving uh, uh, individuals uh, access to decisions and thinking by their representatives. In a democracy, that ought to be reflexive. But uh, on the contrary, WikiLeaks is being um, heavily uh, under heavy attack by by the government, and corporations are participating in that like by closing down their websites. So that's, uh, but you know, the Julian Assange shouldn't be uh, the subject of grand jury hearings. He should be given a medal. He's contributing to democracy. I mean, you know, I've spent a lot of time long before the technology revolution. There, were, there was declassification of documents. And I've spent quite a lot of time studying uh, declassified uh, internal documents and written a lot about them, in fact. And anybody who's worked through the declassified record can see very clearly that the reason for classification is very rarely to protect the state or the society from enemies. And most of the time, it's to protect the state from its citizens, let, so that they don't know what the government's doing. Uh, so it's kind of internal defense, which raises a question, should we even have the classification system? Why shouldn't these things be open? I mean, there are things that you, know, you want to keep secret, like the characteristics of your latest uh, fighter plane or something like that. But most of what's done I think is kept secret so the public won't know. Um, and, and I think the same is true of the, whatever WikiLeaks is exposing. And what WikiLeaks is exposing is kind of superficial in a way. You know, if, like say the Pentagon Papers. That's material, that went much deeper. That went to internal government planning back for 25 years. And uh, those are things that the public should have known about. They sh in a, democracy, they should have known what leaders are thinking and planning about a major uh, event, a major enterprises like the Vietnam War. It was kept secret from them. Uh, WikiLeaks is providing information on, you know, what uh, ambassadors are sending to Washington, things like that. I mean, maybe some of that has a right to some kind of secrecy, but there's a heavy burden and I think it'd be pretty hard to meet. I mean, I haven't read everything from WikiLeaks by any means, but uh, the parts that I've read and seen, I think, are things that the public should know. It seems that there, there so there's a difference in content in what WikiLeaks revealed and what the Pentagon. Oh, totally revealed. different. And but but the medium was different because I know you were involved in, um, in publishing. I was involved in the book Pentagon. as well, right? Yeah, um, but also I had them in advance and I could write about them. And right. Actually, when Dan Ellsberg was underground, I was one of the people. There were a number of people who were giving out materials to the press. And but WikiLeaks um, happened through the internet, which wasn't yeah. really anticipated then. No, it wasn't then. Um, so do you see a difference in the way that they were distributed and that itself being a kind of threat rather than the content so much? That it has so much more... Yeah, money? it's different, but I think it's basically the same threat. The threat is that the public will know what the government's up to. And that's, you know, and any system of power is going to want to keep free from public surveillance. That's natural. It shouldn't be, but it's very natural. Worse than that, they shut, they helped shut down the sites. You know, they refused to let them, their own sites be used for distributing and things, or even for payment at the beginning. So, yeah, I think that's a kind of a contradiction, if you like. I mean, I don't think it's hard to explain. Uh, they're in both cases supportive of U.S. government positions, pretty much.